This is the third in a series of technical performance measurements on the Sennheiser 100 G3 wireless system. If you haven't looked at the previous two videos in the series, do have a look at those. I'm not going to repeat my description of the test system and the purpose for these videos, so definitely look at those. Today I think I have something very interesting that uh, I think you'll enjoy, and it is measurements of the signal-to-noise ratio. So in the last video, we had a look at the distortion from the system, and the way we did that was we took a measurement of the uh, signal with um, one kilohertz test tone in it, but you can also use the same file to do the traditional signal-to-noise measurement um, calculation. The way you do that is you have a look at the strength of the signal, which we can measure here in SoundForge using the statistics function. And we can see that the average RMS value for the test tone is at about minus 13 dB. And we can do a similar test over here in the quiet part. And if we do that, we can see that the noise level is at about minus 94. So you can just subtract those two and get your noise measurement. So that would be around 80 dB uh, for the signal to noise. However, a couple of things wrong with this. One is that the Sony digital recorder has a noise floor of right around 95 dB, so we're actually operating right at the noise limit of the recorder. Additionally, if you look into how these wireless systems work, they use a system called Companding, which has a companion circuit that does two things. It has a compressor on the transmitter side that compresses the dynamic range of the signal, and then it has a complementary expander on the receiver so that you can take a very wide dynamic range and compress it down into the dynamic range available in the wireless link. So as a result of that, the signal-to-noise ratio isn't as simple as the static measurement we did would suggest. What actually happens is, as the signal is applied, the uh, noise level will rise and then fall again, uh, depending on how loud the signal is. So if we look at what the test tone looks like minus the input test signal and the harmonics, we can see a noise background that really rises considerably when you look at what it does uh, with no signal present versus what it looks like with the test tone present. So it gives us some idea of what's going on in here. And we can quantify that more exactly by trying to remove some of the test signal and distortion that is inherent in the signal. So one thing we can do is apply a filter to remove the 1K signal that we applied, like so. And we can then measure the uh, signal strength. So if we do that and then measure our statistics one more time, we get an RMS value of about minus 64, 65. So we can see that there's substantially more noise than we would otherwise expect. So that gives us about 50 dB THD plus noise. So that's certainly not as good as what we saw previously. However, it's not as bad as you might think because this kind of noise exists only when there's a signal present and because of that you're unlikely to notice it. So to examine the compounder issue a little bit more thoroughly, I came up with an interesting idea for a test. So what I did for this test was to mix my voice together with an 18 kilohertz signal that would vary in amplitude and basically force the compounder not to compress my voice as much, and that should bring up the noise floor. To make it really obvious, I made sure my voice was recorded at about 30 dB below full scale. That way, 
represents a worst case scenario, uh, much worse than we would typically encounter, but it'll give us an idea of what the noise looks like. So let's uh, have a listen to the test result. My voice will now be mixed with an 18 kilohertz signal designed to prevent the compounder from compressing my voice and thus raising the noise floor during the test. Once the amplitude of the 18 kilohertz signal is reduced, the noise level should once again drop. So we can see that indeed the effect of adding in the test tone did bring the noise floor up to the point where we could actually hear the noise. However, once the test signal was removed, the background noise, as far as I could tell, went away almost entirely. We can see here there's a very small amount of noise, but it's at an extremely low level, about uh, 60 dB or so down, despite the fact that we've already attenuated my voice by 30 dB. So that's a great result. So we can conclude from this that the Sennheiser wireless system is ideally suited to its task of recording voice under normal circumstances, and the signal-to-noise ratio is greater than that of the Sony recorder, which is at least as good as any DSLR or camcorder that I'm aware of. So in short, there shouldn't be any problem with noise in a real-world scenario using the Sennheiser system. And once again, I think it scores an excellent uh, result, although we can see if we set up an artificial scenario, we can bring the noise floor into the audible range. But there doesn't seem to be any trouble at all with the wireless portion of the system. And next up, I will take a look at the absolute noise level of the system when it's attached to a microphone. This is a useful statistic, and I don't think it's mentioned anywhere in the Sennheiser um, literature, so look for that uh, in the next video, which will be a measurement of the equivalent input noise of the uh, preamp section of the plug-on adapter, and should also apply to the um, body pack uh, transmitter as well. So stay tuned for that, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out when that video is released.